Hey guys, Tim here with the Geeked Up Gear Review Group, and today we're going to show you guys two books called Destiny Quest by Michael J. Ward. Now, the first book was The Legion of Shadow, and basically what it is is it's a role playing game, but you can play it by yourself or you can play it with someone else as well. Um, playing it by yourself is easier because then you're flipping back and forth through the pages uh, quicker, but with two people it will work. Um, with two people you can go through the same um, through the same story, or you can split off and go to different stories. Um, the way that we are doing it, me and Anna, Anna uh, has uh, started a character, and how we do it is where I read it, and then she chooses what she wants to do, uh, then that way we, we can both be involved and we can so both enjoy it. Um, I saw these books and thought that they were just storybooks, and I was really interested in just, you know, reading them as a story. And then when I got them, I realized that they weren't a story. They're actually a game, a game book. Um, so, like, in the very front, you have your character sheets, and then you, you know, have this whole elaborate story uh, inside of this. And uh, I have not, you know, we've went through, I think, a couple of side things to find out kind of... Uh, kind of like what's what's in the town and stuff. Um, but right now we're at the tavern and we're getting ready to go on a quest and we accidentally took the wrong path to where we're locked into a quest uh, of a hard quest. And uh, I say we, but Anna. She doesn't have any gear yet or anything. Um, but uh, it's, it's really cool. So let's uh, go ahead and go to the tabletop or the desktop um, and uh, show you guys uh, a little bit of the story and read you guys at least the intro uh, of how you guys uh, start out and how your character comes about uh, and then I'll give you a little taste if you guys have been looking at these um, and uh, I posted a picture and there was a lot of people who said that they had seen it and they've seen it elsewhere uh, it's kind of floating around and they've purchased it and then some people have been a little a little weary about it so I'm here to clarify these are great books so uh, like I said, let's go ahead and go over to the Legion of Shadow. That's our first book, and uh, we'll check it out. All right, guys. So we have here the Legion of Shadow, and I'm sorry about my camera angle. It's just a little difficult to do it any other way. Anyways, uh, this is Destiny Quest. It's a sci-fi book, and um, yeah, this one's a Legion of Shadow by Michael J. Ward, and it is part of a series of Destiny Quest. The second book which we'll show you later, is The Heart of Fire by Michael J. Ward as well. So you're going to start off with this book. This is the first book of the series, or the uh, the dual, dual book uh, dealio. Um, the back of it, <laughs> I'll just read this off to you. And you guys can also check this stuff out at www.destiny-quest.com um, to purchase these books, I do believe. Um, or you can go to www.orionbooks.co.uk um, and uh, you can order them there. So the back of this says, we have no memory of your past. And I can't really get close enough to see the text. With only a sword and a backpack to your name, you must discover your destiny in an unfamiliar world full of monsters and magic. The Legion of Shadow is on the march and must be stopped. As you guide your hero through the epic adventure, you will be choosing the danger that they, that they face, the monsters that they fight, and the treasures that they find. Every decision you make will have an impact on the story and ultimately the fate of your hero. With hundreds of special items to discover, you can completely customize your hero. You can, you can choose their weapons, their armor, their special abilities, even the boots on their feet, and the cloak on their back. No two heroes will ever be alike which means your story will always be unfolding. Welcome to a new world. Welcome to Valoran. Welcome to Destiny Quest. Now, also, and I wanted to say this to the end, but this is so exciting. After you've built your character in this, you can actually compete against an opponent. Um, the only thing that it doesn't come with is dice, which um, most of us already have the dice, but if you're a book reader, but you want to get into gaming, uh, and you want to do a role-playing game, this is definitely a place where I would start. I mean, there's plenty of content in here. I mean, look at all the adventure you have to go on. And uh, we, I mean, I want to say we played, played, 
but then I say I want to say we read. So it's like we read and played for I don't know a couple hours, and you can go. You know, it, it depends on where you start. You could go all the way to the back and then come to the front. Uh, this is the first time I've ever seen a book like this, so that's why it's kind of new to me. Um, Anna, she did a mystery solving game a long time ago uh, with this style of a book, uh, but she didn't realize that they had these types of books for something that she's more interested in now. So what's kind of cool also about the book is that in the center of the book, it gives you a map. So it shows you like the village icon, green quest is easy, orange quest is average, blue quest is hard, and red quest harder, and then you got a boss monster and legendary monsters, and over here you have the map that you're going to start with on Act 1, Tidbury. And then once you get to Act 2, then you'll be in the Mistwoods of Black Marsh, and then Act 3 is the Bonefields. So, knowing that there's three acts in the game, and the artwork in this is amazing. I mean, it's just ridiculously awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm sad that there's not more artwork in there. Um, there's also this, which is uh, something I probably shouldn't read right now because I haven't gotten that far. So I'm not going to read that. Um, but right here is the first quest that we're on. Uh, we've already been to the tavern and looked at some stuff over there and uh, stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, this is a really cool, really cool book, and, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of fun. So let me read the very first part, and I'm hoping that reading this, <clears throat> you will, well, it's also got stuff in here like health, speed, stuff like that, like there's speed, armor, health. And starting attributes. I mean, it's just its amazing that you can come up with a book of stuff like this. So, let me get to this first part. Okay, so right here's the prologue. It's a knight's legacy. And I'm sorry, it's like story time. Um, and I don't, I don't have my pipe yet. I ordered one. It's one of those little e-cig pipes. And, uh, so... Uh, well, maybe we'll start doing story time like weekly or something with this book and uh, going through the adventure together and then maybe like you guys can leave comments or something on what we should do in the next part when I like leave it a cliffhanger or something so you are thrown from the dream kicking and flailing it is some seconds before you can catch your breath images of black scaled monsters and sharp fangs still swimming before your vision and I'll try to read this where you guys can see it as you're as your surroundings slowly come into focus, you find yourself lying on, the, on your back against the soggy ground, a steady pattern of rain beating on the dead leaves and dirt above you. A full moon streams gar garish light through the treetops, picking out the charred, twisted remains the ins that encircled you. Bodies, I'm sorry, bodies, corpses, frantically you scramble to your feet, the cold rain making the ground slippery with mud as you stand and the angry pain causes you to stagger thumping against the inside of your head putting a hand to the back of your scalp you feel a wound or bruise to your surprise you find nothing all around you the ground is scorched and smoking forming a crater with you as its center sprawled around its edge are a dozen bodies each one burnt beyond all recognition you close your eyes, struggling to remember what happened, how you came to be here. You look down at your tattered clothing, rain-soaked and smeared with mud. A splatter of blood covers one sleeve. Tentatively, you pull back the cloth. Your eyes widening in surprise when you see the purple mark branded into the skin. The design is detailed and intricate, showing three diamond bodies. The bodied serpents intertwined in a dizzling pattern of spirals. Around them, a number of strange styles, sigils, glow with a soft purplish light. <clears throat> so that's like the very first page. And then it goes for two, three, four pages. And uh, I'll continue reading. And I'll go ahead and get you guys through this first sector. 
You hear a groan coming from the trees ahead. Covering the strange mark, you stagger through the mud towards the sound. Instinctively, your hand goes to your belt looking for a weapon, but there is none. You are unarmed. Scanning the mud, you find a rusty looking dagger next to one of the scorched bodies. You crouch down and pick it up before heading into the dark, into the dark trees. A man is lying with his back against one of the trunks. No, a boy, not much older than 15. He is clad in pla plate armor, this thick mud splattered cloak benched up, bunched up around his shoulders. The shaft of an arrow protrudes from his lower chest, having pierced through the links between the metal plates. The boy looks up as you, looks up as you approach, his face deathly white and dripping with rainwater. A trickle of blood seeps from the corner of his mouth. What? What happened? You ask, kneeling beside the wounded knight. The boy fixes his watery eyes on you. You don't remember? He he rasps hoarsely. You say nothing. Your you say nothing. Your attention shifting to the black fetched arrow. Who did this? Who are those people? You gesture back towards the clearing where the scorched bodies lie in twisted repose. Brigands, thieves! Gasps the boy, grimacing with pain. They attacked our camp. Our camp? You ask. You close your eyes, struggling to remember what happened, to find the, that part of yourself, that corner of your mind where some memory or trace of who you are might still remain. There is nothing, only the chill darkness as cold and impenetrable as the night. When you open your eyes, you, you are misted with angry tears. I don't remember. I don't remember anything. The boy gives a pained grasp as he struggles to, the raise, to raise one of his hands. With a trembling finger, he points to your head. Look, you took a blow right before you killed those men. You draw back, inhaling sharply. I, I did that? Back there? Image of those charred, ruined bodies fl flash before your eyes. How? Some magic, whispers the boy. It came from that mark on your arm. You flinch, clutching your arm protectively against your chest. The boy smirks at your reaction. You've never mentioned it. I guess it was something you wanted. You didn't want me to know. And this? You ask. Looking down at the black fetched arrow, assassin spit at me. He grimaces. He was the only one to get away with their leader, I think. Where the arrow shaft meets the skin, you can see the green poison bubbling out of the wound. The boy reads your fatal expression. I know it's too late for me. Your shoulders sag. It is a grim thought that this dying night is the last remaining link to your past, to your previous life that is now forgotten. We know each other? You ask hesitantly. We met yesterday, rasped the boy. We were both traveling the same road to Tithbury Cross. You shake your head. The name means nothing to you. I'm an academy knight, the boy wheezes. Just graduated top of my class. I was going to appreciate I was going to apprentice. He stops as, he, as a wave of pain forces to sh him to shudder. You put out your hand, gripping his shoulder and willing him to go on. I was going to apprentice with Avian Dale. <clears throat> the great Avian Dale. For a moment there is a flicker of life in his eyes, his pain forgotten as he stares wistfully up, up to the dark sky. It was my instructor's idea. He said I was the best in my year. Avian doesn't accept just anyone. I was special. His face sours as he looks down at the arrow shaft. Now that life is over, suddenly from somewhere back in the forest, you hear a piercing shriek. You glance nervously over the over your shoulder. Harpies, grimaces the boy. They pack they hunt in packs. The scent. He lifts his hands, revealing palms soaked with his blood. It will draw them here. You must go. But I can't just leave you. I must find out. My pack. Fetch my pack. The boy tilts his head, following his gaze. You see a brown pack lying, backpack lying at the base of one of the trees. You quickly retrieve it, surprised at his lightness. As you lift it out of the mud, the boy gestures for you to open it. Inside, wedged between a bundle of clothes, is a rolled up sheet of parchment. Take it, whispers the boy. It's my letter from the academy. Unrolling the scroll, you see that it is covered in neat, flowing script. It is addressed to an Avion Dale, outlining the merits of a young Academy Knight. It ends in a green seal of wax, displaying the insignia.
of a winged dragon. I can't take this, you protest, shaking your head. The boy gives a wheezing cough, his body jerking painfully with the effort. It is no good to me. Take it. Start a new life. He'll never know. A screech draws your attention skywards. Black shapes are circling overhead, their spindly, feathered bodies silhouetted against the full moon. Harpies, something inside you is urging you to flee, urging you to flee. The mark along your arm tingles as if sensing, some, sensing the dan same danger. You roll up the scroll and stuff it into the pack. When you look over at the boy, you see that his head is now testing, resting against his chest. His eyes closed. Death has finally taken him. I will find the assassin that did this. I promise. You reach down and take the boy's sword. It is a well-balanced blade, the hilt and pommel studded with gems. You have gained the following item. So now we've gained a sword, and we have to remember to add this item to your hero sheet, adding one to your brawn and magic scores. So then you would go to your sheet, put that in there. Another bird-like screech tears through the night. There are answering calls from all around you, worrying close. Quickly, your shoulder the knight's pack and then start running. You shoulder the knight's pack and start running. You find comfort and purpose, keeping it to a fast pace as you weave between the withered trees of the dark forest. After, the f after what feels like an age of battling through the cloying mud and driving rain, you spy a cave in the hollow of a hill. Having found shelter, you sit and await the dawn, shivering with more than just the cold. The wooden signpost points southwards, where the marshy forest gives way to green rolling hills. Tithbury Cross, three miles. You take a deep breath of the warm morning air. A new life, a new start. Peeling back your sleeve, you look down at the purple mark glowing beneath your skin. Does this strange mark hold the key to your past? And what of the future? You can scan you scan the letter of introduction once again, a letter recommending a talented knight to apprentice with one of the grandmasters of the profession, Avian Dale. It should have been the young boy. This was his future, his dream. It is no good to me. Take it. Start a new life. He'll never know. No one will ever know. Carefully you roll up the letter and return it to your pack. Before setting off down the long dusty road towards Tithbury, and now it'll tell you to turn to the first map at the beginning of Act 1 of your adventure, refer to the color section of the center of the book, choose where you want to explore by turning to the, to the entry number displayed next to the relevant shield. As a novice adventurer, you will want to start with the green quests first, as these are the easiest to complete. Return to the map when you want to choose a new quest or destination. Good luck. So. Now we go to the map here of Tithbury, and we can go to 15, which is the top left, which is green. We can go to 22, that is right side of the river in the northeast, or I can recommend that we go to 10, which is on the west side, southwest of the river. Well, that'd be the road and north of the river. And those are the only places that we have for Act 1 of Tisbury. So, in the comment section below, if you guys want to choose where we go, 15, 22, or 10, whichever one is chosen the most of is where we'll go next. And remember, in our pack, we now have that sword. So, I will start a character sheet, I will build and put that sword in the pack, and then we can choose where we're going and Tidbury. And then we can next week go on to the next part of the Legion of Shadow. And then once we complete this book, we will move on to the Heart of Fire. So let's go ahead and go to our conclusion of what we think about this book. And hopefully you guys can leave some comments on what you think about the book. And buy a copy if you want to follow us on our series that we will try to do every week or start your own adventure and you already know that you